Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about packaging dependencies, which will include dependencies in software, why dependency management is needed, and elements of a dependency management strategy. My name is Sushant Sutish, and I'm your trainer for this AZ400 Azure DevOps Engineer Certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let us start with understanding what is dependency management. Modern software development involves complex projects and solutions. Projects have dependencies on other projects and solutions are not single piece of software. The solutions and software build consist of multiple parts and components and are often reused. As code bases are expanding and evolving, it needs to be componentized to be maintainable. A team that is writing software will not write every piece of code by itself. They leverage existing code written by other teams or companies or open source code that is readily available for them. Each component can have its own maintenance, speed of change and distribution giving birth, giving both the creators and consumers of the components autonomy. A software engineer will need to identify the components that make up part of the solution and decide whether to write the implementation or include an existing component. The latter approach introduces a dependency on other components. So why is this dependency management needed? It is essential that the software dependencies that are introduced in a project and solution can be properly declared and resolved. You need to be able to manage the overall composition of project code and the included dependencies. Without proper dependency management, it will be hard to keep the components in the solution controlled. Now let us look at the elements of a dependency management strategy. There are a number of aspects for a dependency management strategy. They are standardization, package formats and sources, and versioning. So what is standardization? Managing dependencies benefit from a standardized way of declaring and resolving them in your code base. Standardization allows a repeatable, predictable process and usage that can be automated as well. Second dependency management strategy is package format and sources. The distribution of dependencies can be performed by a packaging method suited for the type of dependency in your solution. Each dependency is packaged using its applicable format and stored in a centralized source. Your dependency management strategy should include the selection of package formats and corresponding sources where to store and retrieve packages. The third one is versioning. Just like your own code and components, the dependencies in your solution usually evolve over time. While your code bases grow and changes, you need to take into account the changes in your dependencies as well. This requires a versioning mechanism for the dependencies so you can be selective of the particular version of the dependency you want to use. Let us look at how you can identify dependencies. It starts with identifying the dependencies in your code base and deciding which dependencies will be formalized. Your software project and its solutions probably already use dependencies. It is very common to use libraries and frameworks that are not written by yourself. Additionally, your existing code base might have internal dependencies that are not treated as such. For example, take a piece of code that implements certain business domain model. It might be included as source code in your project and also consumed in other projects and teams. You need to look into your code bases to identify pieces of code that can be considered dependencies to also treat them as such. This requires changes to how you organize your code and build the solution. It will bring your components together. Let's look at the two ways of componentization commonly used for. The first one is source componentization and the second one is package componentization. So what is source componentization? The first way of componentization is focused on source code. It refers to splitting up the source code in the code base in separate parts and organizing it around the identified components. It works as long as the source code is not shared outside of the project. Once the components need to be shared, 
it requires distributing the source code or the produced binary artifacts that are created from it. The second stage is package componentization. Distributing of software components is performed by means of packages as a formal way of wrapping and handling the components. A shift to packages adds characteristics needed for proper dependency management, like tracking and versioning of packages in your solution. Now let's look into identifying how can you decompose your system. Before you can change your code base into separate components to prepare for finding dependencies that can be taken out of your system, you will need to get better insight into your code and solution. This allows you to decompose your system to individual components and dependencies. The goal is to reduce the size of your own code base and system, making it more efficient to build and manageable in the end. You achieve this by removing certain components of your solution. These are going to be centralized, reused and maintained independently. You will remove these components and externalizing them from your solution at the expense of introducing dependencies on other components. This process of finding and externalizing components is effectively called dependencies. It may require some refactoring such as creating new solution artifacts for code organization or code changes to cater for unchanged code to take a dependency on an external component. You might need to introduce some code design patterns to isolate and include the componentized code. Decomposing could also mean that you will replace your own implementation of reusable code with an available open source or commercial component. Let us look at the different ways you can scan your code base for dependencies. There are a number of ways to identify the dependencies in your code base. These include scanning your code for patterns and reuse, as well as analyzing how the solution is composed of individual modules and components. The first way is finding the duplicate code. When certain pieces of code appear in several places, it is a good indication that this code can be reused. Keep in mind that code duplication is not necessarily a bad practice. However, if the code can be made available in a properly reusable way, it does have benefits over copying code and having to manage that. The first step to isolate these pieces of duplicate code is to centralize them in the code base and componentize them in the appropriate way for the type of the code. The second approach is to find code that might define components in your solution. You will look for code elements that have a high cohesion to each other and low coupling with other parts of code. This could be a certain object model and business logic or code that is related because of its responsibility, such as a set of helper or utility code or perhaps a basis of other code to be built upon. And the third method is finding the individual life cycle. Related to the high cohesion, you can look for parts of your code have a similar life cycle and can be deployed and released individually. If such code can be maintained by a team separate from the code base that it is currently in, it is an indication that it could be a component outside of the solution. Another method is looking for stable parts. Some parts of your code base might have a slow rate of change. That particular code is stable and is not altered often. You can check your code repository to find the code with a low change frequency. And the last method is looking for independent code and components. So whenever code and components are independent and unrelated to other parts of your system, it can potentially be isolated to a separate component and dependency. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are gonna start with understanding what is package management. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.